Secular Equilibrium in Radioactive Decay Chains, Part 2. In the last video, we saw that under secular equilibrium, the water level in each container is constant because the rate at which drops enter and leave the container are exactly matched. So what's the equilibrium amount for a given container? For example, let's say that the half-life of the railroad tanker car is one year, and the half-life of the city water tank is 100 years. Because the railroad tanker car tends to leak 100 times faster than the city water tank, it must contain only 1 hundredth as much water to be leaking at the same rate. So if the city water tank contains 500,000 gallons, the railroad tanker car must contain 1 hundredth as much, or 5,000 gallons. Under secular equilibrium, the amount of water in each container is exactly proportional to the container's half-life. The longer the half-life, the larger the amount present in the container. For a rock containing one gram of U-238, this table shows the mass of each decay product present in the rock. The left column shows the decay sequence, uranium-238 to thorium-234, thorium-234 to protactinium-234, and so on, down to lead-206, which is stable. The middle column shows each nuclide's half-life. The rightmost column shows the total mass present of each nuclide. For example, take the half-life of radium, 1600 years, and divide it by the half-life of U-238, 4.5 billion years, and you get this result, which is about one part in three million. That's the ratio of radium atoms to U-238 atoms present in the rock. We need to multiply this number by an adjustment factor to account for the difference in mass between radium and uranium atoms. This is simply the ratio of their mass numbers. Then we multiply this result by one gram, the mass of the U-238. The answer is 0.34 micrograms, or one three millionth of a gram of radium in the rock. What happens when you chemically extract uranium from its ore? That's like moving aside the whole string of full containers, which represents the mining waste, and placing a new set of empty containers below the city water tank, which represents the separated uranium. As time goes by, the extracted uranium starts filling the empty bucket, which then starts filling up the tin cup, and so on. Meanwhile, in the mining waste, all of the containers are dripping initially. The bucket runs up first, then the tin cup, and so on. The barrel and railroad tanker, because they take so long to fill up, delay secular equilibrium from being reached for a very long time. They also keep radioactive decay running in the mining waste for a very long time. Each drip out of each container represents an atomic decay that releases harmful radiation. The mining waste has a lot more dripping containers than the extracted uranium. So it's safer to live near a uranium storage shed than the waste dump of a uranium mine. To summarize, secular equilibrium is the state in which all decay chain products have accumulated to their respective equilibrium amounts so that each nuclide decays at the same rate as the original ancestor nuclide. This is true for any uranium-bearing rock that has been undisturbed for geological ages. For more information, follow the links provided below.